first of all, before I, I delve into the substance of the question you asked, I wish to, first of all, commend the, the sacrifice, the bravery, the forthrightness and formidability of Nigerian youth right across that very country at this moment in time, doing something that no other generation in Black Africa has been able to do. This is a moment in history that will be looked back on in many years to come as the time that the politics of ethnicity, the politics of tribe, the politics of religion was put to bed. You made reference to a clip making the rounds, which I can categorically tell you that yes, it is my voice. Yes, I made a broadcast a few days ago when young people were being slaughtered at Lekki Tollgate. And in that very speech that I made, it was very clear and unambiguous. But the people that cut and paste and put the clip together were trying to be very mischievous. Their intention is to try to infuse an element of tribal ethnicity into the ongoing campaign to free young people from the bondage that Nigeria has become. And their intention, I believe, has failed very woefully. Yeah. At no time, at no time, I must say, did I insinuate or say anything to convey the erroneous impression we are now peddling that we, we are now taking over or control of Lagos State. I was live on air, and somebody called, a Biafran for that matter, a young lady called from Lekki, they were under attack. And as a matter of fact, the, that very clip has been posted on my page, on my Facebook page. And I made it very clear that the fact that the Shia Muslims were slaughtered and nobody did anything, IPOB over the years have been slaughtered or are being slaughtered and nothing ever happened, that have now in a way Given, given impetus to the government to do what they did at Lekki Tollgate. Unless you do not have a child, anybody who has empathy, anybody who has a child, anybody who is a parent, you will feel for what those people went through a couple of nights ago. And in the heat of the moment, enraged and angry that such a thing could be happening to those holding Nigerian flag and singing Nigerian national anthem, that spontaneous anger and rage within those survivors from Lekki Tollgate spilled out and became what you're now having today. It was the government that provoked it. We knew those who were involved and their names were mentioned and the people took it upon themselves to exact revenge. That was exactly what happened. Now, listen to this. Somebody rang the program. That very person said they are calling from Oyibo. And as you well know, in Igbo child, that the white man miraculously named Port Harcourt, there is a place called Obibo, not Oyibo. I corrected the caller by telling the caller that you are calling from Obibo and not Oyibo. Do you know that these people twisted those words and said that I was referring to Oyimbo somewhere in Lagos, that Biafrans are now intending or planning to take over a part of Yoruba land. And the world must understand this. When we started our agitation for Biafra, there was a lot of representations and a lot of people asked us to nationalize it, so to speak, to make it Nigeria wide. And I said no for exactly what is happening today. If I am not allowed to intervene when Nigerian youths are protesting, that means there is no Nigeria in the first place. And the most shocking thing about it is that the people who are behind this very cheap propaganda are supposedly learned men and women. If you claim there is a place called Nigeria and something is happening in a part of Nigeria, and so to speak, another Nigerian from elsewhere is making an intervention. It could be positive, it could be negative. Are you now saying or implying 
that people should only intervene only when matters or issues affect where they come from. If that is the case, then the whole One Nigeria debate is a hypocritical one. That is what I want the world to take away from this. Now, at no time did I imply that any part of Yoruba land is being taken over by Biafrans. At no time did I imply that we are there to take over what our young people are doing on the ground. This protest, which has now turned into a revolution, was spontaneous. As a result of years and decades of brutality of the state against innocent young people, ostensibly from the South. Thank you. We have not made any attempt whatsoever. We have not made any attempt whatsoever to immerse ourselves in the process that they are now going through in order to accomplish what they have set out to accomplish in the first place. What we merely did was to give our widows might to direct them as to the best things to do. That very state called Nigeria have been involved in the killing of their young people, not just robbing them of their dreams, but killing them quite literally. And something needs to be done about it. And we are doing something about it. What else I find very shocking and distressing is this. We have now forgotten about those that lost their lives at Leki. We have now forgotten about those who we are drenched in blood and the green, white, green flag of Nigeria soaked in the blood of the innocent. We are now talking about tribe and ethnicity from people that should know better, from people who over the years have been telling us about the virtues of one Nigeria and the need to sustain a sense of pride and nationalism within each and every citizen. All of a sudden, they have become very parochial. All of a sudden, they have withdrawn into their tribal shells. And that is very, very distressing. And it is not in a, a good place for any of us to be in. Right now, our focus is to encourage our young people to be law abiding, to protest, which they have a right to, and to ensure that all the demands they have set out is being met by the government. And anything we can do in that regard to accomplish the results for which these young people took out of the streets and have sacrificed their lives for is what we are going to do. We are not going to be deterred. Hausa, Ibo, Yoruba, Efi, Kizon, everybody is there. Gwari, everybody is there out on the streets protesting and asking for a better society. So this very nonsensical ploy to try to infuse tribe into it, it has failed already and it will continue to fail. We are no longer going to be divided. Everybody is suffering. And we have now come together to say, we must put an end to it. They can try all they like. As the professor said, they unleashed their thugs in Abuja. Was that IPOB? They were holding Jericho rifles supplied by Israeli government to fight Boko Haram. They gave it to their thugs in Abuja to go out and kill people. That is very, very sad. That is what we are fighting against. The government is the problem. The state is the problem. Those who support this edifice of corruption called Nigeria, they are the problem. They are now playing the ethnic card. They never believed that something, this, this monumental revolution would have happened in their time. It is now happening and they have to live with it. There is only one solution, meet the demands of the young people. Then they will go back home. If you do not meet it, they will remain on the streets until victory is assured. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that intervention. Now, before, before I come back to Chief Femi, uh, Femi Fani Kayode, now I want you to, because you have made it very, very clear that in your own words, at the heat of the moment, these are the words that I have noted down at the heat of the moment, those calls or those comments were made. Can you please, in the interest of our people. Now, for those that have listened to your initial message that might not have the opportunity, that we are given the opportunity uh, now, can you please rephrase or make your stand explicitly clear? Thank you. 
my stand is that I support our young people, I support the protesters, and I also support the right of people to express their views without, without it being distorted. As I've said before, they cut out what I said and then quoted me out of context. If you want to know what I actually said and the context within which I made those statements and comments, you need to listen to the entire broadcast. It is called perspective so that people can understand where we're coming from. Them cutting it this very way, they were very upset that Bola met Tinubu jumped ship and ran away from Lagos. That is entirely their prerogative. But one thing we are fighting against is corruption at all levels, regardless of who is involved. Regardless of who is involved, corruption will be fought. It doesn't matter if they are Igbo, if they are John, it doesn't matter if they are Ibibio, it doesn't matter where you come from, corruption must be fought by everybody. When people try to ethnicize it, that becomes the problem of Nigeria. And that is what our young people are fighting this very day. Thank you. Go and much. listen to what I said. I am against violence of any sort. We are in alliance with Yoruba people. I love Yoruba people very, very much. I would not dream of intervening in the affairs of Yoruba people. I am a Republican. I am from Ibeku. Even in Omaha, you have a home. You have so, a May I proceed? Okay. Please proceed. Thank you very much. What we are saying is this. It doesn't matter. The problem of Nigeria is that when somebody from your tribe or your ethnicity is corrupt, you try to protect them. I am against it. I am against it and I will fight against it. And I believe that is what the young people are fighting against right now out on the streets and sacrificing their lives in the process. I hate it. It is very, very cheap. Condescending and unbecoming of people who claim that they are learned. What we are fighting for is an equitable and just society and a future that not just ourselves, our children, but the whole of Africa will be proud of. And these brave young people now out on the streets are doing exactly that and we must support them. If you kill them, you become my enemy. I don't give a damn who you are. Once you kill these young people, it doesn't matter if they're Hausa, if they're Fulani, if they're Bachama, if they're from anywhere in Nigeria, once you kill them, I will despise you. I have been at the forefront of campaigning for justice for Shia Muslims. I am not a Muslim. I am not Shia. And I'm not from um, Southern Kaduna or from the North as the case may be, but I have been fighting for them and I will continue to fight for them. What I'm saying, I was quoted out of context. What I said was taken away bit by bit from the broadcast. They did their cut and paste to make it sound very horrible to gain a greater perspective and insight into what I actually said. And under the circumstances which I said them, you must listen to the entire broadcast. And I have this to say, all of them trying as much as they can to infuse ethnicity and tribalism into this brave work that our young people are doing, they have failed on arrival. That is how Nigeria behaves. They need to, something they learned from Britain, unfortunately. They must divide you to conquer you. They now know that the South is very strong. They now know there is no enmity or any issues between the Yorubas and the Igbos, the Oduduwas and Biafrans, and they are doing all they can to engender one. They want to start a problem so that this very protest, this very revolution will collapse, but they have failed because people are now wiser and they are more sensible. Do you think that I will ask my father was a traditional ruler before his demise. Are you telling me that I will give orders to people to go to the Oba of Lagos residents to go and try to desecrate it? I will not even dream about it. I won't even think about it. As I was saying before, we were uh, um, um, somehow distracted. I am from Ibeku, in Omoaya. In that same Omoaya, there is a home. In Omoaya, there is home opera. In Omaha, there is in Sirimo, in Omaha, there is Obakala. I cannot leave Ibeku and go to Obakala and tell them what to do without them inviting me to do so. Therefore, I can never, ever. And to be honest with you, if in any way, shape, or form, what you've heard have somehow conveyed an erroneous impression of what I was saying, then I do apologize for that. 
But what I'm trying to say to people and what I need them to understand is this. Corruption must be fought. It doesn't matter who is involved, their tribe. The same thing that Fulani Janjaweed are doing with Buhari is what some of these people are trying to do with Tinubu. The same thing, and you're talking about a good country, a good Nigeria, whereas you are being very tribalistic about issues. I'll be, I'll, in fact, I'll be very, very happy if somebody else from any other ethnic group can come and be as vocal and as vociferous as to what is happening to Biafran people. Our men were killed in 2016, a lot of them at war. And might I also correct one other misleading impression that these people, these criminals may have about what we are trying to accomplish here. I use the word our people all the time or our men. We are all in this together, everybody. If you want a better society, if you want a better existence, if you want a better experience of life, you must support what the young people are doing. And I refer to them as our people and they became very angry. I think some of them are slightly, um, should I say envious or jealous that youths are listening to us and they are doing what they are asked to do. I think it's a bit of envy and jealousy and the need to divide the South. They have failed. They cannot succeed. There is no problem between the East and the West. Between the East, the West, which is the South and the Middle Belt, none whatsoever. And these haggard old criminals cannot succeed. They've tried this nonsense in the past. They succeeded. They divided Awolowo and Danam Yazikiwe. They cannot do it now. They cannot do it with this generation of 2020. They cannot do it because freedom beckons and we are going to commit all we have to ensure that our children have a better future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, you know, putting that out there. Again, there is something that is very clear, whoever is listening. He said clearly, if you have misunderstood what he said, that he is sorry. That is very clear and that must be clear to everyone. 